let's learn how to do a folded hem. This technique you'll find on a lot of my sweaters where the collar has this ribbing and you knit the long ribbing and then fold it in half by picking up stitches to get that beautiful curved rounded edge. So what I love about this technique is it's not too tight. You get that beautiful professional finish. You might find it on socks, sweater cuffs, or collars. So let's dive in and learn this fun technique. For the folded hem, you want to work your ribbing or stitch pattern twice as long as you want your hem to be. So I'm knitting a sock and I want the cuff to be about that long. So I knit twice as long as I want my cuff to be. This is the right side of the fabric. And what I like to do is look at the right side, look at your first stitch at the beginning of the round, go all the way down to the cast on edge and place a stitch marker where that first stitch is at the edge. This is gonna be the first stitch you pick up. Okay, look at the right side. You're going to fold the fabric inside like this. And look at that marked cast on stitch. You wanna line that up with your first live stitch. So fold it inside out, and this is gonna be what my sock cuff length is gonna be. Once you fold it inside out like this, if it looks too short to you, then knit a few more rounds or rows. Or yeah, knit a few, knit a few more rounds. So I'm gonna take my working tail of yarn, and I'm going to knit through that first stitch, and I'm gonna stick my needle through that picked up strand thanks to my stitch marker. And you're going to bring the yarn through both of those stitches and off. We're gonna do that for every stitch. Insert the needle into the next stitch and then you wanna look for the next little strand of yarn right there and pull it through the live stitch and the picked up stitch knit through the next stitch and look where's that next strand of yarn. I did a long tail cast on, so each one of these little single strands of yarn will be the next stitch. So here's my next one that I see. Pull it through and pull it through the live stitch. There we go. Keep on doing that. Knit through the live stitch and tilt the knitting so you can see that next picked up stitch. Let's do a couple more of those for you English style knitters. Dive through the live stitch and with the right needle, pick up the next single strand of yarn from the cast on edge, right there. Wrap the yarn around and pull it through both of those stitches. Ooh. There we go. Insert the right needle through the live stitch. Pick up that next little strand of yarn at the cast on edge. Wrap the yarn around and pull it through. Pointy needle tips help with this to make sure you grab the yarn through both of those stitches. And if you're not sure which strand to pick up along your cast on edge, just start picking up and try to get every next stitch. And if you're not sure where you are in your round, just double check and you can say, okay, I'm looking at my knit column right here. And then you can kind of like trace it down. Okay. That's my knit column. Okay. I'm like pinching the fabric right there now. Oh, yep. It's lining up. That knit column's coming up. If it looks like that column is shifted over too much, then you might need to uh, skip a stitch when you pick one up, or you might need to pick up into the same stitch a couple times if it looks like you're getting a little bit skewed, a little bit shifted one way or the other. But uh, keep on going until all the stitches are picked up. We're gonna knit through that live stitch. And there we go, there's the next picked up stitch. Ooh, make sure you get both of those on the needle tip. One and two. Next live stitch. Get the next picked up stitch. There we go. So this is how you do it when you just do a long tail cast on or whatever cast on you have. If this feels a little tricky for you, next time maybe try a provisional cast on. 
So if you do a provisional cast on where you can take out that waste yarn and get live stitches at the cast on, you could place all your provisionally cast on stitches onto an extra second needle and then you could knit and then you could knit your live stitch together with your cast on live stitch if you provisionally cast them on. But uh, I like to do the long tail cast on because it's so quick and easy and just keep on picking up those stitches and every so often, every 10 or 20 stitches, do a double check where you are, making sure, okay, I'm at this column. I'll pinch it down there. Oh, let's see, I think I'm getting, I think I skipped a stitch or something. So I think I need to, next time I pick up a stitch, I'm getting a little bit off. So I'm gonna pick this one, This I'm gonna knit this live stitch, and I'm gonna go into the same picked up stitch that I did on that last stitch. So you can always fudge it and kind of go into the same stitch a couple times and you just want to make sure you don't get like you don't want the fabric to like or do that. You want to make sure your columns are lined up. So keep on going until you have all the stitches attached and once you do that you're going to have this beautiful folded hem that looks really nice on the inside and outside and it gives this double thick hem to your sweaters or it's a stretchy double thick layer to your sock cuffs and it's really nice and beautiful on both sides. Well I hope you loved knitting that folded hem and you can try this with any sweater pattern even if a pattern says to knit just regular ribbing you could knit that ribbing twice as long and do that folded hem technique for the collar or the bottom of the sweater it could be really nice and double thick as well. It's really professional looking and I just love that clean stretchy finish of a folded hem. So if you love this video I have a lot more technique videos here on my YouTube channel so feel free to subscribe and click away and find some other techniques that strike your imagination to get you learning some new knitting skills. I'll see you in the next video.